Turtle 415 is now out. NVIDIA has done goofed again. Mozilla makes it rain. And the Italian military goes open sauce? Question mark? I don't know, but I do know it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and talk about some of the fun things we found going on in Linux land. I'm Vin Stone, joined by my co-host, Juan Pedro Mateus, as always, Hello. every week, to discuss some of the craziness. Um, hey man, how are things in Britannia? I heard you had some bouncing rain? Yeah, we had bouncy rain today. Uh middle of the morning it just started hailing mm -hmm. it was raining at first and then just hail hail all over the place nathan got up like oh bouncy rain nice <laughs> bouncy rain did you throw something at him <laughs> no i got up and looked out the window what the hell was he talking about it's like oh oh okay bouncy rain. i get it hmm. right <laughs> Not a whole lot to report over here, except like, what, four hours ago, I decided to rip apart our entire audio chain. It's like, I have an idea. Let's test it out before the show. So if we explode, implode, or terraplode, I don't even know if that's a word, but it is now. That's what has happened. So the big news this week, uh, 4.15 is out and everything has come up Millhouse, correct? Kind of, yeah. Actually, uh, I guess the, those delays and those increased uh, numbers in release candidates did prove to, you know, uh, work themselves out to a decent little kernel. Uh, I've been testing it on this box and on the uh, the laptop, that uh, scavenged HP laptop I use. It uh, is holding up pretty well. There are no noticeable performance impacts from the um, the meltdown or... Oh, what was the other one? Spectre. The Spectre patches, none of those seem to... The ones that are in, and Ven will get into that a bit more, uh, those don't seem to have any measurable performance impact. Now, uh, the uh, re red pull line, however you want to say it, those patches that Google came up with, those aren't in the kernel yet, but they say they are working on it, so that's something. Uh, I did run into an issue with the laptop, because at work we have uh, Dell D1000 docks, which have a little display driver, if you because they're USB 3.0 docks, and if you want to push displays out through that, you need a specific driver. And the kernel module does not build against 415, so that will need a bit of an update. Hmm. Well, I... Some of the yeah. big news outside of Spectre, I think, is Vega support out of the box, which is oh, really, yes. really good news, and I want support to that. You know, I'd love my next purchase to be an AMD card. Let's hope that happens. Maybe it is. Um, but, you know, even, even Linus kind of throws down with the Spectre stuff. He's like, nothing's really done here with the Spectre meltdown. Uh, a lot of work is still left to be done, and... What does he say to quote, perhaps equally importantly, to actually get the biggest fix for indirect branch migrations, you need to not, you know, not just the kernel updates, you need to have a compiler with support for the, yeah, the indirect branch model. So <laughs> it doesn't fix everything, but hey, it's there. And I didn't notice anything crazy. I think the biggest issue, and I'm not even calling it an issue, uh, when is a V4 Linux, you know, the V4L2 loopback device that we use for the virtual mm -hmm. cams that we're using right now. Didn't compile out of the box. I had to clone the git again. Ooh, ooh, torture. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but outside of that, we're running it right now to uh, record the show. So no complaints. But in order to run yep. 415, you had to install uh, NVIDIA with your own NVIDIA. 390 and the latest stable version is not 19 it's 0.25 and i think it's kind of a hot piece of busted mess um oh yeah it's there i installed it works with 415 few small issues now on Ubuntu 1710 light dm login screens just blank gives you a cursor you just gotta gotta take it on um good faith <laughs> good faith that your um password box is there waiting on you which it was chrome and Chromium-based browsers, they have some serious stuttering issues. I mean, annoying ones. Like, I uh, haven't had that problem with Firefox. So I've been using Firefox, mm -hmm. and what I'd like to know, maybe somebody playing the home game, 
can tell me is, is there a way to import all my Google logins and all that fun stuff into Firefox? Because I, I use what works and it is a bad stuttery nightmare. Even if you disable GL accelerated canvas or anything like that. Now you can, mm -hmm. th there's a small fix that'll speed it up, especially with Vivaldi or Chromium is if you go into uh, Chrome flags and force enable rasterization. That will help you out yeah, a little yeah. bit. But Pedro, I wanted to ask you this. I think what this does, man, is it kind of highlights just how good NVIDIA drivers <laughs> have been in the past because we don't expect yep. this from them. Uh, the, and the issues don't stop there. Now, admittedly, I didn't run into the LightDM uh, blank login screen. It seems to be working just fine on my end. But I did run into an issue, an issue which was very, very annoying. See, the first thing I do uh, the moment I install new drivers is I fire up all the games and all the benchmarks I usually do to see if there was any performance, uh, any performance loss with the new drivers, uh, just to be sure, and I didn't notice any performance loss, quite the opposite. Uh, a lot of the benchmarks actually ga gave me slightly higher scores than previously. But there was an issue, a very significant issue. Because I was looking at um, Unigen Superposition, and at 1080p Extreme, even the 1080 can only push like 26 frames on average. And whenever that frame rate dropped below 25, I would see black tearing uh, across the uh, secondary monitor it's like what the hell's going on here so uh i did a little bit of digging and i went to the nvidia developer forums uh, there will be a link in the show notes for that thread i'm not the only one turns out this is a widespread issue there's a lot of people who also ran into that that's really annoying no man um I, one thing i was worried about with the beta version of this driver which was equally as shocking when it was released because we're again we're not used to it you know google has defiled what beta <laughs> means because they keep stuff until it's uh -huh. a finished product it was janky it had issues like it wouldn't detect my third monitor unless i rotated it strange things none of that here gaming performance seemed the same didn't have any real complaints for it um but yeah, they, they got to fix that Chrome. I don't know who to blame. That irritates me more than anything else. I, I don't know who to scream at. I was like, should I scream at Google? Should I scream at NVIDIA? Why not both? And it'll be impotent rage all over the internet. And maybe that'll accomplish something because it won't. But yeah. speaking of Chrome, Chrome 64 is out for Mac, that other operating system. And most importantly, Linux with CPU migrations improved, popped up, popped up. I like that popped up blocker. And uh, a little feature I like to call uh, ZD NetAway. Yeah, that is definitely a thing. The migrations in Chrome 64 to the V8 JavaScript engine, they're going to protect against the speculative side channel attacks, booger booger, improved pop up blocker. And back to what I was talking about the site wide audio muting setting, the ZDNet filter. It is kind of brilliant. Mm -hmm. I like that because. For worse or for really worse, one thing that we have definitely seen, I'm sure you've noticed this, is autoplay videos. Oh, yeah. It's so and bad. they happen a lot. It's like you go to a news site and you start hearing, just like, ooh, where's that coming from? So, and then you struggle to find the video because it's all the way at the top of the page. It's like the teeny tiny window on a the corner there. All right. <laughs> that, that, that's the worst thing. They, they'll have it. They, they know you don't want to watch it, but they still want to keep it there and it'll minimize and continue playing. Mm -hmm. And that's bad. That's as, that's, it's worse than the takeover pages. You know, where they just <laughs> yeah, have the big, uh, hey, subscribe yeah, to our the thing. JavaScript. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things they should actually uh, do with the pop-up blocker. It's those JavaScript pop-ups, which aren't actually pop-ups since they don't spawn a new tab or a new, a new window, but they cover up the whole thing. That's why uh, I guess uh, uBlock Origin isn't going any anywhere anytime soon. Um, yeah, definitely a thing. And where I'm like, it's like JavaScript. I use, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what is it? No script. And rarely will i whitelist a site because most sites function just fine without it 
<laughs> and yeah. you you constantly end up with oh I'll enable it for this site and see what's up. oh holy heck. nope 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 let's <laughs> put that back where it was uh whew, that was frightening so um we've talked about chrome we need to talk about mozilla Oh, yes. And Mozilla, they're doing a thing. They're talking about Moss for the Q4 of 2017, what just ended. And, uh, well, the title of the article is Supporting the, the Python Ecosystem. So Strider is possibly in tears right now, jumping for joy, whatever he does. I don't know. He's French. <laughs> but, yeah, we love Strider. Don't get me wrong. Um But they are, like they've been doing over the past couple of months, they have been donating money to uh, open source projects that they think will improve something that they're doing right now or something that they may do in the uh, in the not too distant future and right now they're giving over seventy thousand dollars to the rust av project which uh, aims to re-implement uh, libav in rust besides my obvious question of why <laughs> thank you it's, uh, it is actually good to see <laughs> it is actually good to see mozilla sort of giving back to the community and even though firefox isn't exactly the dominant uh browser they do uh get some money f to develop it and they find just enough to give away to other people so that's awesome yeah, man. Um, good on Mozilla. I mean, 2017, uh, Mozilla has invested 1.6 million wet stinky caches in supporting open source projects. Uh, and this quarter, under the, what do they call it, the secure open source arms of Moss, expanded the scope of the program. They've done a lot of cool, cool stuff uh, with the secure code projects. Uh, applications. You might want to pay attention to this uh, if you want some of that sweet, sweet funding for found, what is it, foundational technology and mission partners. That remains open until the end of this month. So, yeah, go check that out. Again, in the show notes, and yep. you know, maybe you can get some of the uh, Mozilla sponsory love. But, Pedro, uh, Italy's not your... I know Spain's your favorite country, but close. <laughs> yeah. Close <laughs> is um, Italy. And, you know, we've lost uh, some governments to Microsoft lately, which we've had to talk about we've gained some but mm -hmm. italy's military of all things seems kind of strange yeah it turns out they uh they're not happy with having to pay lots and lots of euros i guess yeah italy is in euros um to renew their microsoft office licenses and they decided to adopt a libra office yep uh the open document foundation uh is basically very very happy and it's great to see that an official government organization like the Italian military uh, are adopting the open document formats and using LibreOffice to get their show on the road, so to speak. And it's just good to see. They say the Libre Defesa, Defesa, sorry, it's Italian. Uh, um, the project is going to save them from 26 to 29 million euros in the future that's a significant chunk of cash right there oh it absolutely is man i mean they're talking about switching over eight thousand pc workstations to gluber office which i think is mm -hmm. great um they have their own advocacy group uh right on uh, it's the military whatever whatever you want to think of that just open source that's anything's better than microsoft office and that then the lock-in yeah. that comes behind it it is a straight up uh, Hydra, hashtag hell Hydra. They're also contemplating the use of Linux for their desktop workstation. So, you know, that's how you get them. You give them, give them the taste, give them the taste. And mm -hmm. uh, unlike uh, your home country of Portugal, which is probably still running DOS, right? <laughs> well, uh, some hospitals are still running DOS. The hospital uh, in my hometown is still very much running DOS because it still works. But uh, if only, if only the rest of the country was also running DOS, maybe they wouldn't have spent several million euros, like a hundred million euros, to renew Windows licenses, Office licenses on all the official uh, government branches. Yeah. Yeah. So this was announced to great fanfare and to the surprise of absolutely no one. It is Xorg will in fact be the default for 1804 Ubuntu LTS. And um, all right, one of the things they pointed out, uh, why opt for Xorg by default? 
There are three main reasons. One of them's legit, son. Recoverability from shell crashes and less dramatic. Well, they are less dramatic under Exorg, because it's not like a shell crash under Wayland. We'll take down the entire... Yes, it absolutely will. Yep. Um, yeah, I got a little bit of hope, <laughs> because on their web zone, they, they mentioned the fact that Pipewire, in just mm -hmm. mentioning it, saying it and admitting it's a thing... Pedro gives me a little bit of hope that Canonical will, will not try to mirror pipe wire, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think with the looming IPO uh, on the horizon, still waiting on that one, that, uh, Canonical, um, I'm willing to bet that they realize that the not invented here philosophy doesn't really work when no one else wants to use what you invent so i think they're just going it's like okay there's a lot of support behind pipewire we already talked about pipewire here on the show mm -hmm. um it's trying to do for video what pulse audio did for um audio and if they can do it if they can get rid of all the video uh finagling that comes with gstreamer and everything else if they can get that all centralized in the pipe wire, um, whatever you want to call it, it's is a good idea, well, and it's something I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and kind of wish that it, I quit quit mining things, and I might be able to pick up a uh, Vega based card because I could start <laughs> legitimately playing around with Waitlin with that because nvidia not so much and I, I don't think you're going to be seeing that as a default session until this chicken and chainsaw thing gets sorted out with um mm -hmm. you know nvidia saying okay let's make actually make some functional closed source horrible evil drivers for it and um definitely make that a thing so you, you you've been jonesing for a chromebook for some bizarre moon mm -hmm. reason yes and it's a toy i like toys hey man I, I feel you on that we all like toys but canonical's like yo uh maybe you got a chromebook M maybe you want some of that um sweet sweet ubuntu on it right mm -hmm. and uh well you can do it uh it's uh it's basically a td tiny tutorial telling you how to install ubuntu on a chromebook and they use crouton like sensible people again it's just more evidence that canonical seems to realize that uh third party tools may be a good thing but yeah they teach you how to use crouton and you can install whichever version of ubuntu they use the regular default uh, gnome one but you can use it to install kubuntu zubuntu lubuntu whatever so that's good it's basically Canonical's closest official support to Chromebooks as we'll ever see. <laughs> this is true. However, I do feel, you know, this is basically a handy guide that's going to help people understand why that $200 budget Chromebook uh, was running Chrome OS in the first place. Because later on, I think it was a step, not step, but point, bullet point five at the end. It's like, do you like playing games? Mm -hmm. Pseudo apt and install Steam. Yeah, you're going to have a bad time, dot JPEG on that one. Don't. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, unless you're going to be playing it some is. very minimalistic 2D, not really accelerated anything, right? Am I being too harsh well, on that? Well, uh, you are... You are basically going to get the exact same experience you would from any other laptop that just uses the Intel integrated graphics, which, to be fair, nowadays are actually not completely horrible because they support Tessellation, uh, they support Vulkan, so maybe if we start seeing more Vulkan games, you can actually put that 200 cheapo Chromebook to use and play some nice-looking games with good-looking graphics mm. at a decent frame rate. And we should put out with Crouton. I mean, it's not like you have to go scorched earth policy. You can switch back and forth. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Movie phone's dead, but Movie Box is here to save us because you're too lazy to figure out what movies you want to watch and or don't have Netflix is the only other <laughs> um, thing I can think about. Machine learning movie recommendation engine. It is a thing. It's open source. I thought it was kind of neat. It's a content-based machine learning recommended system built with the powers of TF, IDF, and cosine similarities. Just a fun little experiment. It's Using maths to recommend movies. <laughs> hey, oh, 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 all right. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, uh-uh. Time out, time out. What, what do you think Netflix uses? Manatees. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they probably use a very similar system. They give movies certain IDs based on whichever genre they fit into, and then they try to recommend stuff that fits that same ID. Yeah. Probably a very similar system to what uh, Movie Box is using. Uh, though uh, they have a little screenshot of a test they ran, uh, which the given movie was Asterix and Obelix, God Save Britannia. And the top three, uh, the first one was Asterix the Gaul. The second one was Asterix and the Vikings. And the third one was Carry On Cleo. Hmm. Okay, I can get the Cleopatra <laughs> reference and the Asterix and Obelix um, tie-in, but really, carry on, Cleo. <laughs> hey, man, it's a fun little project. I just wanted to give it a plug because what I, I need AI to figure out what movie I should. I don't. I don't have enough time to watch anything. I'm so far behind. <laughs> it's miserable. Um, Nori, your partner in crime. Mm-hmm likes to do the art stuff and one thing like support oh, yes. for the um tablets and drawing pads not not so hot on linux man not so not so, not so great no it isn't uh, especially if you uh have one of those off brands it's not exactly a wacom uh by any means uh getting that to work you're mostly relying on the wacom driver because that's the most mature one and it does support the generic ones this on the other hand this is the wacom smart pad support for linux and the wacom smart pad is what you can see at the picture at the top you basically have a paper notebook where you do your drawings and it digitizes uh, the pad itself, feels the pressure and it digitizes it to a tablet or whatever you happen to have with the app installed. And you can then export it as a vector drawing to use in say Inkscape. But um, I actually was a bit confused when I started reading this article because uh, Bamboo themselves have uh, an application that's called Inkspace. Mm -hmm. and not Inkscape. They kind of switch the P and the C around. So it's like, uh, wait, Inkspace? Doesn't that? Oh, right, Inkspace. Right, right, right. But yeah, Inkspace uh, is the mobile app that they use. And right now, the project, what they're trying to do is get the Bamboo Spark, the Bamboo Slate, the Bamboo Folio, and the Intuos Pro Paper uh, to be usable with Linux. Now, this is very early days. So uh, even the Bluetooth support for the, the smart pad is iffy. It can only, if you sync it to Linux, it basically forgets all the other syncs that it ever did. So if you want to sync it back to your phone or your tablet, you're going to have to make it forget the, uh, the Linux desktop or laptop that you synced it to. So yeah, it is still a bit iffy, but getting proper support for all Wacom devices, not just the smart pads, is a really good way to get professional hobby or hobbyist artists looking to, you know, maybe move away from the Macs or the Windows and starting to look at Linux instead, which is actually one of Nori's big complaints is uh, her drawing tablet that I got her a few years back is still not properly supported on Linux. It sort of works, but it is very much iffy so better support please that's why i use crayons because they're delicious um <laughs> no that's good to see support like that i'm digging it good good luck wrestling it out of somebody who's fully bought into the apple reality distortion complex because yeah. they're, they're not they'll probably cut you if you try to get them to use something other than that business neat uh Article is legit, though. I mean, what you said, it's early days. Progress to be made, so mm -hmm. it could take another 30, possibly 35 more seconds before we have full support up and running. Real quick mention before we get out of here. Um, it's a couple of weeks back. I think it was Penny in Chatrealm asked, Hey, man, how do I set up Raid 1 on Linux? And guess what? Out of all people, PC Gamer <laughs> has a reasonably done easy to follow guide for setting up raid on linux mm -hmm. and it's not completely backwards insane it's something i feel that we can say hey if you're looking to do this this is pretty straightforward i don't think you'll bork anything with yep. these instructions and they will be in the show notes did you notice anything uh 
Yeah, I noticed the firmware raid option as, you, as you're scrolling past it now. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> they actually give you uh, what you'll need to do if you, instead of using MDADM, like a sane person would, if you'd like to do it in a firmware raid, which I've done in the past, Ven is doing right now. Uh, so yeah, it, it is there. It's an option. But raid one is for the weak. You either YOLO raid that business or it, just don't bother. <laughs> hey man, YOLO raid is best raid. And uh, you gotta live dangerously with these SSDs because they're too reliable. So if you stack yeah. two of them, you can danger zone it just a little bit more. I mean, just go crazy. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, outside of like replication, if you get an NVMe drive, you're good because sometimes I just benchmark it so I could see it transfer like 2.5 gigabytes a second. I was like, oh, that's good. Yep. No other reason. So, uh, Pedro, let's take a hot second and thank the lovely, beautiful people who make this show possible and um, head over to linuxgamecast.com forward slash support where we get all this good stuff set up, ready to go. We got Patreon, we got Amazon affiliate links, we got Newegg, a humble bundle. They have a really raunchy book bundle, Woo! which made me laugh. I'm oh, a yeah. Yeah, family friendly bundle. show, but we're not going to talk about that. Some PayPal, <laughs> some Bitcoin, and all the standard jazz that we do have. But our favorite part is to thank some of the people who have made this show possible. And this week, uh, we, we have a new patron, man. We have a new patron. Yes, we do. Mr. Daniel Y is a new Patreon. Thank you very, very much. Uh, speaking of Patreon, Ven, mm -hmm. you uh, put there in the show notes that there's some big announcement you'd like to make. Woo, 224. Hey, 224, we're getting up there. 113, 113 patrons. Yeah. Woo. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah man. I, I might have snuck in a few goals when people weren't looking, buddy. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. I'm being, I'm being a little... Yeah. Um, so we got our merch run that is up on the board but, yes. but if you if i click this right button oh here's the big news Ooh, 260 this is the <laughs> this is the big one right here 260 linux weekly daily wednesdays it's going to get it it's going to be a big boy it's going to become an official yeah uh, thing it's, it's going to have its own rss feed so you can pop it on <laughs> your um tv your roku anything like that and then you can watch the show that that was our big news pedro <laughs> nothing more to announce and um that's yeah, best I can do. Man. Yeah, no, nothing whatsoever. Uh, maybe the goal immediately after that. No. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean that little thing? Oh, fine. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. You're, you're just trying to belittle my RSS feed. That's going to be incredibly fun. <laughs> We're just playing around. Hey, man. Uh, we do have a goal because we want to bring Jill on full time. It's called Raising the Bar. Oh, yes. You know Jill. She's in Shot Realm right now from Linux Chicks LA. Will be joining us each and every week, every Wednesday, to help us sit back, relax, and talk about the cool things going on in the world of Linux. We are definitely looking forward to that and to make that happen. Because oh, yes. that's just going to be the beginning of Jill's involvement. We got some other stuff planned. And it's not terribly secret, but you, you can kind of read around the lines. So... Hey, man, we're starting out a new month, and I'm pretty sure we're going to smash that little goal because it's like, what are we, 40 bucks off? Yeah. Uh, probably <laughs> safe bet to say Jill will be joining us in um, February, most of it. Most likely, yeah. Did I forget anything? Oh, yeah, we, we have... A, oh, crap, man. Pedro, I'm getting angry. You yeah, said, you have some big ideas there. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no I, I got to think... Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I was leaning on it. Uh, Jonas <laughs> Rulio, J. Rulio, picked this up from our Amazon Wish Zone. It is like legit the uh, Emerit Power Conditioner, and it has French lettering on it, which is awesome. We put this in the rack. It's He's, the fur man. <laughs> he sent us a little note. Hi, Vin, Jordan, Pedro. Enjoy the clean AC. One day I'll join you for rocket cars, which is great. You get to send us a little note. That went immediately into the rack, and it's powering it right now. That's awesome. Uh yeah, speaking of the studio stuff, because uh, we, we do have one more goal that we, we just threw in, and I kind of don't want to talk about it because it's achievable, and it's, <laughs> I don't even want to look at the camera because it's scary, man. Um, yeah, uh, hey, Julio, thank you so much for that, man. Um, you, you guys have, I, I still think it's a practical joke being played on us every time something disappears from our wish zone because it just radically just like lets us leapfrog, and mm -hmm. uh, it's like cheat mode, but... One last little tiny goal. 
<sighs> All right. He says, yeah, you, see, <laughs> you see, Pedro, I'm about to speak it into existence. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> uh, All right. It's called the Kansas Alpha site. Kind of like Stargate Alpha sites, man. Which is going to be a gigabit powered, a gigabit powered madhouse of debauchery slash open studio where everyone can come in and watch the shows live. We can bring Pedro in. We can bring Jordan in live. And we're going to set it up here, not here, because that's one of the downsides, because I'd like to sell my house at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So making a party fun house a little beta site and the whole purpose of this is to prepare well it's going to be in preparation for the eventual move to kansas which is our large goal uh, where we will be harming <laughs> log cabins we're going to build a log cabin with google fiber but i'm kind of shopping around places right now because we have access in athens to gigabit symmetrical through at&t mm -hmm. and that, that, that's all I want to say about that because that's a very achievable thing and it's going to cause me to lose sleep. So <laughs> there's that at the end of the day, man. Okay. You can cause Van physical pain again. Yeah, you better be very Just careful saying. because then I'm going to fly you out here and I'm going to cause you physical pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jet lag probably gonna bite me <laughs> no, uh, flying back's not bad it's flying there that loops you pretty yeah. bad <laughs> ladies and gentlemen let's have a little slice of pie 3.14 bites of goodness coming right at you where we talk about some of the uh, Ooh, tiny yeah. little embedded things and this week it's a little gaming related man yes yes it is uh someone actually turned uh a genesis portable into something that's mildly useful and you can see just how crammed everything is in there there's a bit of a video as well um so yeah it's a raspberry pi zero or you can also use this a raspberry pi zero w if you want some weefies and this crazy person which i had the name of and uh disappeared um where is it Arr, arr, arr. Nah. Starfire, there it is. Um, Starfire has taken one of his um, Genesis portables apart, removed all the contents, and basically came up with his own very hacky way to shove the Raspberry Pi Zero in there with a screen, a battery, and wire uh, the connectors and everything else, uh, the connectors for the buttons. So it is a portable gaming machine, a very, very portable gaming machine, absolutely teeny tiny and it has a raspberry pi in it that's a full computer in a teeny tiny package no it absolutely is and i, I take offense to you calling that hacky this is very well done now listen <laughs> keeping the case on you got a lipo battery in there and that business is tight mm -hmm. i i would say that that would only register like a one out of ten on the tsa meter that would easily go through no, they see, oh, it's one of those portable things that you can play games on. All right. All right. And in <laughs> Not unlike anything that Linux Nuru does. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, just make sure the back is like glued on, because if they crack the back, and they're like, nope, yep. yeah, you, you're going to get um, some extra screening. But to continue our little <laughs> gaming trend, Amazon has the Raspberry 3 Retro Gaming Kit up for 65 what stinky caches and oh yes this is an interesting piece of kit man i mean you get your raspi you get your little nes you know original clone you get your hdmi cables a couple of heat sinks ubs drive power supply 32 gig ssd card everything's kind of set up you just stick the last little bits together and bam mm -hmm. you have your piece of kit and i just wanted to throw this out there because okay yes you can probably get the parts sourced individually cheaper, but if you're just looking for, eh, man, all right, I, I just want to build the thing and I'm done with it and say I did it. Or if you want to mm -hmm. buy a couple of these kits for school and say, here, mm -hmm. or have... to give someone who has an enterprising uh, little spawn who you'd like to maybe get into the work, you know, get into the, uh, hand crafting hand building stuff mm -hmm. you get them a kit it's like a birthday gift christmas present whatever uh this one is pretty good 
65 bucks for everything that's included as the Raspberry Pi the case and everything else that Ven mentioned. That's a pretty good price. You're going to be hard pressed to find that good uh, an SD card and the Raspberry Pi and the uh, NES looking case for that low, let alone all the cables and the power adapters and everything I else. Mean, I, I'm pretty uh, sure Adafruit probably has something similar, but then again, this is also on yeah. Amazon and you probably already have Amazon Prime. Um, probably. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Pedro, sometimes people like to talk back to us because we got something wrong or we don't know what we're talking about or a combination of both of those. How can they go about doing that? Yeah. Well, they can go about doing that by screaming general insults in our direction if they see us walking down the street or going to linuxgamecast.com, uh, clicking on the contact button and picking LWDW from the little drop downy box. Then all they need to do is fill in the form. It's really easy. Uh, they can, again, shout all manner of insults at us. Chances are we'll probably cover those in that Saturday show with the foul language and everything else, what we do. Uh, but here we are. Go ahead. I, I, if anybody tried to send um, some feedback our way the day before yesterday for like a two hour period, I was upgrading PHP to 5.6 and it wasn't working and I had to fight with a SMTP to make that work. So you might want to send it back again because it probably got bounced. Mm -hmm. But um, we're a podcast. If you don't know we're a podcast, uh, I think everyone does because like 3%. Yeah. <laughs> watch youtube videos i'm like wait a minute you have a youtube video i was like yeah all right but um paul paul had a little question for us man yes a very teeny tiny very concise question he says hi i try and listen to your podcast on my sonos system your podcast will not play it says the podcast is not formatted right any ideas well then you're the one with the sonos so i'll defer to you <laughs> What are you accusing me of having a Sonos, man? Is that, is that the line of questioning? <laughs> it's not open source. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Um, my first question to you, sir, is are you using TuneIn with your Sonos? Because I, I checked that and the feed was working with the TuneIn player. That's how you can do it with the Sonos. But usually how I listen to podcasts with especially the kitchen Sonos, I call it the kitchen Sonos because that's the one that's in the kitchen. It's always kind of funky. I just use the ox and I know that's not a solution to your problem, but I use that with, you know, a tablet and it's a 3.5 millimeter TRS. Um, no issues there. Uh, our feed passes the iTunes validation and it's on everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I can't tell you it's a problem on our end. Maybe somebody else knows a workaround or a solution so they can write us back and we can get to that next week. Um, Sorry, it doesn't contact Sonos. Like, let them know yeah. if you have a particular issue because there's nothing with Sonos. There's a lot of different versions. Hey, yeah, guess I don't know. And um, you should get some good support because they're not cheap. It's definitely a no. thing. <laughs> uh, something exploded on the internet, and everyone wanted to get outraged about it. And I'm. Uh, I'm not outraged about any of this, but uh, who is it? <laughs> Simone or Simon? Simon G, maybe. Says, uh, hey man. Yeah, Simon G. He says it's not Linux related, but what are your thoughts on the PC perspective? Drama, question mark. Should I be outraged? <laughs> question mark. Yes, get your pitchfork and uh, I... I don't know. Get get angry at Star Trek Discovery. Focus your rage where it should. I like this Discovery. Come on. <laughs> It's pretty good. Um, I, like Pedro, pretty much had to go digging around. I was like, well, what did PC... Because I know a lot of people at PC. Per Josh has been on this very show. And um, yes. so is Scott. So is, We've uh, had Scott. Right. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I put a link in the show notes. It's something about uh -huh. Shrout. What was it called? Shrout Research. Shrout Research. That, yeah. Apparently was or was not disclosed. It, uh, what do the kids say these days? It's a big nothing burger. <laughs> yeah, there was, there is a, an entire segment of the internet that's just looking for the next big drama so they can join the bandwagon and hate on someone. Mm -hmm. And this one was about a video that Adore TV made calling out PC Perspective on the... It was the AMD FreeSync stuff, the power draw on the RX 480. 
uh, the um, yes, the non-disclosure of the 900p uh, SSD that Intel gave to Ryan for him to do the white paper on Shroud Research, and then they used that very same sample to run the uh, the benchmarks on PC Per. And all of that boiled down to Ryan writing a very long um, Reddit post. And now, I am still blocked by Ryan Shroud on Twitter because I called him a shill for defending NVIDIA on the whole 970, three and a half gig thing. Uh, well, I was a bit more crass than that in my language. And he said, you know what? Fine, you're blocked. And I'm still blocked, and I'm okay with that. Uh, he still hasn't uh, really made any sort of amends to that. To why, him making why, why, why would he? I have, I have seen you argue on the <laughs> internet. You think you, you're like a dog chasing a car, man. If you ever catch it, you wouldn't know what to do with it. I mean, it, it's a reflex reaction with you. Um, I'm going to say this. I, I do try to watch the PC, but I didn't know about trout research. I didn't know that was a thing. Maybe mm -hmm. he's mentioned it. I've never heard about it. I don't know if that's necessarily a conflict of interest, but I'll tell you this, man. Their business is getting product samples, reviewing product samples, hopefully a little mm -hmm. bit earlier than that. And I have seen Ryan talk about, he's like, yeah, sometimes you got to kind of play nice, nice. You just can't go scorched earth on these people. Or the next thing, yeah. you know, thing Y comes out, you're not getting it. You got to go out and buy it, which they do go out and buy some stuff. But yeah, that does explain how they got those Optane drives and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm not going to say maybe. That definitely should have been like, by the way, this is why we got access to it. Not like, oh, we don't know how we got it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But beautiful people, thank you for showing up. It's been fun. We're going to do this again next week and the week after that. You know, next week, Pedro, it's going to be two years that we've been doing this. Two years. Two years. Two years. Funded Two. by you lot. This, this <laughs> was a Patreon goal and it keeps on and we want to keep on doing yeah. it and make it better and bring people in. Uh, let's go ahead and show those credits. They're kind of janky. I, I discovered yes. a bug. See, I, I, I was I was debating on saying, hey, man, I added that in post with effects. No, it was just it's just some weird bug. The um, GL again. Uh, NVIDIA. That's not a weird bug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is exactly what I'm seeing on my screens with the new NVIDIA drivers. Okay, so I, I, can only, I can only make this happen on the third out of fourth monitor. Yeah. And it only did it with this, so... Yeah, but that is exactly what I'm seeing, so NVIDIA, exit! I'll, I'll tell you how to disable. Well, see, I, I don't see it directly on the monitor, I only see it in the loopback device. Mm-hmm.